Yes, well, good day, everyone, and welcome to the second of a four-part webinar series that explores the Swiss UAV ecosystem and its many facets. The objective of this webinar series is to outline how your company can participate in Switzerland's technological and regulatory march towards the future. Each webinar in this series provides in-depth perspectives and real-world cases. Today's session will provide you with in-depth knowledge of how companies can collaborate with the world's leading drone labs in Switzerland and, of course, how they can take off from a Swiss airfield. My name is Lucas Sieber and I will be moderating today's presentation. This webinar series has been co-developed by my organization, the Greater Zurich Area, and the organization known as Invest Western Switzerland, also known as Greater Geneva Bern Area. My colleague with Invest Western Switzerland, Matt Julian, who is also on this call, and whom you might know from the first session, will be moderating the next webinar taking place in about 10 days. What we do, Greater Zurich Area and Greater Geneva Bern Area in West Western Switzerland is quite simple. We have common goals and that can be phrased as our organization are here to act as a single source of free support and assistance to companies interested in exploring business expansion opportunities, scientific collaborations and partnerships throughout Switzerland. Before we delve into the topic and into the content, let me do some some housekeeping. I'd like to and now I'd like to give you an overview of what you see on your screen. The webinar will be of about one hour in duration, 50 or so minutes uh, dedicated to presentations by our panelists and we will reserve about 10 minutes at the end of today's session for a Q&A. If you have a question, please submit them we submit it in the box uh, to the right on your screen and we'll do our best to answer the question during our session today. If you are unable to respond to your specific question or if you would like to reach out to us directly, please do not hesitate to do so. We will share our, our email addresses throughout today's session. We will record today's webinar and we will share the recording after today's session. You will also receive a follow-up email tomorrow, including the, the session today. And we, of course, also are going to YouTube today's content. Well, let me talk a little bit, a little bit about the drone ecosystem of Switzerland. Switzerland has established itself as a leading location for innovation, testing and deployment of UAV technologies in a highly regulated but open skies environment. Our regulatory authorities are working closely with industry and their counterparts around the world to develop tools and digital technologies that will ultimately lead to an integrated and safe airspace. Switzerland offers a unique opportunity for companies to innovate test, refine, and ultimately deploy the technologies in the real world, enabling the collection of invaluable experience and data that can be directly applied to the broader commercial market. So now I'm pleased to introduce today's panelists. I will kick off with Professor Roland Sigward. Dr. Sigward is Professor for Autonomous Mobile Robots at ETH Zurich founding co-director of the Technology Transfer Center V Zurich and board member of multiple high-tech companies. He studied mechanical engineering at ETH Zurich, spent 10 years as professor at EPFL Lausanne, held visiting positions at Stanford University, NASA, Amos Lab, and was vice president of ETH Zurich between 2010 and 2014. He is an IEEE Fellow and recipient of an IEEE RAS Pioneer Award and the IEEE RAS Dinava Technical Award. He's among the most cited scientists in, a robots, in robots worldwide, co-founder of more than half a dozen of spin-off companies and a strong promoter of innovation and entrepreneurship in Switzerland. His interests are in the design, control and navigation of flying, wheeled and walking robots operating in complex and highly dynamical environments. We very much look forward to the presentation of Roland, but before we give the floor to Professor Sigward, let me introduce the other speakers as well. After Roland, we will have Melanie Gitte speaking. She's co-founder 
and Chief Business Development Officer of Involi. Melanie is an entrepreneur, co-founder, and as I said, Chief Business Development Officer uh, of Involi, a Swiss high-tech company permitting the safe integration of drones into the airspace. Having an engineering background from EPFL, she has previous experience, she has previous experience linking industries, academia, and authorities through a large through large R&D projects in the field of IT, energy, and aviation. With a wide network in aviation and drones, she leads the development of the network partnerships and collaboration to expand Involi internationally. Very much looking forward to your presentation, Melanie. Let me briefly introduce David. David Lanter is the co-founder of Tinamu Labs. David. Uh, Tinamu Labs is a spin-off from the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, Zurich, also known as ETH Zurich, as we know, which develops, uh, Tinamu Labs develops a turnkey solution for drone-based inspection automation. The system directly delivers real-time data insights to industrial asset owners. David holds a Master of Science in Management Technology from EPFL Lausanne. In previous roles, David gained consulting experience at renowned companies such as Deload, and could sharpen his skills in venture capital. Consulting and VC provided him with the right tools to start an entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial path. At Tinamu Labs, David leads finance and operations. After David, we will have two speakers presenting the Swiss Drone Base Camp, a competence center that is part of the Switzerland Innovation Network. Located in the former army airport in the canton of Ticino, Switzerland's southernmost canton, it is home, the, the center offers full-fledged facilities and the unique indoor and outdoor testing opportunities. One of the speakers that will talk about the Swiss drone base camp is Enzo, Enzo Giannini. Enzo was promoted in economics and computer science at the University of Zurich, and then he assumed different management roles in the IT outsourcing and operations business within the financial industry, where he could gain a large experience working on many projects within international companies. With a strong passion for aviation, as a colonel of the Swiss Air Force and a former private pilot, he started in 2015 a new career in the aviation industry at the RUAC. As general manager, propeller aircraft and UAV, he is also responsible for the maintenance of unmanned aerial systems and currently taking the opportunity given by the change of ownership of the Ludorino Airbase with other partners and he is creating a competence center for drones in the canton of Ticino. Together with uh, Enzo, we will have a uh, uh, Alessandro Giusti, head of robotics lab, Alicia, talking a bit more about the role of the Kent of Ticino in drones and robotics. Alessandro will be our last speaker. He holds a PhD in computer science from the University of Milano, and he has 15 years of research experience in robotics, applied machine learning, computer vision, and data visualization. He has been with uh, ITSIA, which is the Dalim Ole Institute for Artificial Intelligence in the Chino since 2009, where he is now a permanent senior researcher and head of the robotics lab, coordinating a team of about 10 researchers. He took part in a dozen projects in applied research, focusing on deep learning applications to flying and industrial robots. He is the author of more than 80 peer-reviewed publications in top conferences and journals and the recipient of several awards, most of which for innovative applications of deep learning in various fields. This gives me now the great opportunity to give the floor to Professor Dr. Roland Sigward, one of the biggest names in drones. Roland, the floor is yours. Welcome everyone to this uh, webinar on drones. Um, I have the pleasure to introduce uh, this first presentation, uh, a little bit uh, the landscape of drones in Switzerland and how it evolves. So I would like to start and go a little bit back when I was still at EPFL in Lausanne. It, it was uh, just around 2004 
where Doria Floriano and myself in our uh, research lab started to do um, the different research in drones. And out of this, I think there was an initial spark to really develop drones competencies at universities in Switzerland. So the first example is here from Doria Floriano's lab, a very lightweight um, uh, fixed wing airplane, which was equipped also with sensors, which uh, could avoid collisions with the walls you can see here with these uh, black and white strips. So we, in my lab, then I was still at, at the EPFL in Lausanne, we started with a drone, which um, is today known as these quarter drones. The idea was uh, older than, uh, it was not invented by us, but obviously we were the first one which brought this drone up in the sky in a stable way. This was possible because we had all of a certain um, the IMU sensors you need for drone stabilization and calculation power available. On our end, um, then later also at ETH Zurich, we started to push the next level of drones, which um, are much longer, have much longer flight durations. So our vision was to fly more than 24 hours, and we showed that this is in principle feasible with very small drones um, uh, of about uh, two to three meter wingspan, equipped with solar cells of the on the wing and of course charging the batteries for the night flight. <clears throat> Another concept which was developed with a team of students uh, in 2012 at ETH is a, a mix between somewhat a quadrator and a uh, light and air vehicle, a balloon. And the nice property about these systems are that they're extremely safe. So you can see you can fly with these systems over people um, and it will not automatically all, all of a sudden drop from the air. So in parallel, also in Zurich, um, Rafti Andrea started um, his research as a new professor at ETS Zurich, and you most probably of you know this very fascinating flights he showed, where these uh, quadrator drones do very agile maneuvers, can balance sticks, can actually even hand over sticks, can build uh, structures, and so on. This is mainly um, was mainly pushing the agility and modeling and control of these drones. Um, uh, in this uh, first step, uh, these drones were not fully autonomous in, in the sense of they did have off-board sensing with cameras which uh, were able to precisely track the drones. Our next step was actually to further push this question of how can we actually cover bigger space with drones, meaning higher flight time, but still being able to really have a simple way to get off the ground. This was a project which is now today the company Wingtra, which was initiated by a student um, team from ETH Zurich um, with the vision already at this moment, at the end of the bachelor, they want to build a startup company. So the fascinating concept here is that you can lift off like a helicopter by, by only having two propellers and two flaps. And once you are at a certain height, you just move over to a fixed wing mode and by doing so, you are much more efficient. You have typically about a factor of five or even more, um, and can, you can uh, cover much more ground. This was uh, further developed as student projects and then ended up in a startup company, which has today about 80 people. We actually also did some further development of our solar airplanes and showed that we can fly really multiple days this ended up also in some missions we did with earth scientists in Greenland, where these solar airplanes can really fly out very far to do some measurements, mainly with cameras, from glaciers. Um, up to now, the earth scientists had to really go there with airplanes, which is very difficult. It's remote places. It's very difficult to bring the fuel, fuel up. And I think um, drones can do a very great job in this field for remote um, measurements um, at different places. So up to now, uh, or, or up, up to recently, drones were typically used in free airspace. They can take pictures from the air, do some other inspections from the air. We were asking our question, can we actually build roads which don't have to be always um, uh, separated from the infrastructure, but probably which can go into control with the environment. 
With the current drones, with, uh, for example, multi-copters, um, which have a propellers which are all aligned in one plane, this is not possible. Because these systems are underactuated, and as soon as you go in contact with the environment, you risk that the controller becomes unstable. And you cannot freely choose an interaction force and a move. But by actually changing this multi-copter by um, having the propellers and the motors on the sticks, which are in the center, which are turnable, you can see that all of a sudden you can actually move in pure rotation, pure translation, or then also generate forces in one direction and while moving in another direction. And this is uh, especially shown in the second slide, where we demonstrate that with a this uh, omnidirectional quadrotor multi-copter, we can go and just put a pin um, to the helicopter, and then we can apply a force to it, this whiteboard and move laterally to the whiteboard and writing something on the right, right board. Of course, this is not the future of how professors at ETH will write on the blackboard or the whiteboard, but I think you can imagine that this has a lot of potential for other applications up in the air. So I would like to show this um, examples on the left side. You can see how a lot of inspections and repairs and interventions are do, done by humans on ropes. Sometimes it's scaffolds or cranes. This is dangerous and takes a lot of time. And in a lot of situations, if it's, for example, an industrial setting, you have to um, shut down the whole plant, industrial plant, because you have humans next to a chimney and so on. Our vision is to have what you can see on the right side, that drones can do this. And to give you a glimpse that this is uh, already in a good progress, that we can do this with drones, is this drone, which is now commercialized by Oliro, which has also at least a partial omnidirectionality. It can actually select the orientation and the movement independently and this allows this drone to go in contact with the environment for example put a sensor which measures the thickness of the the coating or the status of the corrosion on a structure and by doing this um, you can replace actually these dangerous jobs of people hanging on ropes do it much faster and much more, more regularly because it's much easier to to apply this so a second thing with drones, which actually develop more or less in parallel with drones, is that drones have also to see. At one point, especially if you are flying close to infrastructures, you have to understand how you fly, where you fly. GPS will not be uh, enough anymore. One development which, is, uh, which was done, especially also in Switzerland, not only for drones, but also for virtual reality and augmented reality, is um, the tracking of features from one image to the other. If you can easily imagine, if you track features from one image to the other, and these are special algorithms which have been developed at different research labs, especially also at ETH Zurich, um, this allows you to actually recover the three-dimensional information of images taken from different places. And even more interesting for flying platforms, it allows you to estimate your motion and you localize you in the environment. If you apply this, you can do something like this, which is shown here as an example. This guy has to inspect some industrial and uh, industrial setting every day. So he has to go to one federal station, take some measurements from valves and so on. At one point, he decides to take his smartphone with him or tablet, and the tablet is doing this motion estimation using this feature, uh, and then you build up a map based on these features, which are elements which stick out in the image, and you actually calculate the motion the whole tablet did. Now you can very easily push this to, on a flying platform, because the flying platform has also a camera. This camera uses exactly the same features to localize itself. So in a simple way, in a teach and repeat, you can actually do this um, transfer of uh, navigation from a human which moved through the environment to a flying platform. Now, if a flying platform would like to explore the environment, not just follow what the human did, 
you have to have more. You have to have a dense, so as we call it, reconstruction of the environment. And this is not so easy. On flying platforms, you would like to have very light sensors. So laser 3D sensors doesn't work typically on small drones. But with um, the appropriate new development from universities, you can actually build up a 3D uh, map on the fly of the environment. This is a demonstration of a flying platform uh, equipped only with the camera and the IU, of course, for stabilization that on the um, right side on the lower part, you can see how the system automatically builds up the map. And then, of course, you can have a planner which automatically finds the best and most appropriate way to go along this, um, this forest without colliding with the environment. So the goal or the, the task of this robot was only to fly just 100 meters forward and without knowing anything. And it did all the calculation on board to do really this, uh, fulfill this task. This is still um, to be fully commercialized or industrialized, but this is state of the art, which what we can do today um, with, uh, with drones, and this opens a lot of new uh, possibilities. I would end, uh, like to end with uh, some overview, of course, we already have heard, especially the two technical universities um, in Lausanne and Zurich are the key developer and research units um, developing these new technologies. Is, on one side, it's robot design, but on the other side, it's also all the, the elements which are required for perception and navigation. We have also a couple of uh, joint um, networks where we have a, a lot of collaboration, like, for example, the, the Na National Center of Competence in Robotics, which join us also together with SUPSI, which we will also hear to, to today. And we have also a, a Center of Competence in Digital Fabrication, where we actually trying to use drones to do replace in some situation in construction scaffolding because scaffolding can be sometimes very very difficult and there is a vision which is probably still a crazy vision and um, to use drones instead of cranes and scaffolds this very strong research which started about um, less than 20 years ago um, brought out a lot of spin-out companies it's uh, more than a dozen companies. I think if you could count all the number of people already um, now, new jobs generated by this company, it's probably close to, to 1,000 jobs, and it's still a very fast growing field. And I'm expecting much more in the future. So quickly at the last point, take home message. In the last two decades, drone technology has evolved from research labs to a fast growing market. Drones are everywhere, but there is still a lot of potential to use them probably in a more professional way for different applications. Thanks to the pioneering work at the universities and all these young people which have been involved in the research, I, can, I think we can say Switzerland has become the home of drones. There is still um, new technologies which are under development. Um, for example, as mentioned before, 3D reconstruction construction and autonomous flight in dense environments, so you can fly also indoor and in very <coughs> dense environment, is still um, on research side, but also needs some way to industrialize it. Physical interaction, I think this is the next step for drones, where you can actually extend the field of applications. Onboard sense and avoid, uh, to avoid collisions with other uh, participants in the air traffic and of course the seamless integration on drones in the public airspace you will also see some examples how startups from epfl um, help on this end with this i hope i was able to give you a little glimpse uh, how drones developed uh, in the last uh, less than 20 years in switzerland how switzerland became became really the home of drones and also generated a lot of new jobs and i'm Excited to see this all this development. I'm convinced that this will be go even further. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Roland, for your insightful presentation. Should you have questions for Roland, please don't hesitate and add those questions to the 
panel to the right. Uh, the presentation of Roland you can download as well uh, on the panel to the right. You can see we will also share those tomorrow through the follow-up email. Now it is a great pleasure to introduce, uh, to give the floor to Melanie Kite representing Involi, a startup that is integrating safely drones into the Swiss airspace. Melanie, the floor is yours. Perfect, thank you. Thank you very much for, for the opportunity. Let me share my screen. Okay, perfect. So as I said, thank you uh, very much. It's a pleasure to be here. And it's a very nice um, transition with uh, the, the last slide from before on the seamless integration of, of drones in, into the airspace, uh, because we're going to discuss uh, safely integrating drones into their, their traffic and I hope that by, by showcasing what Involi is doing, the technology, I can also explain a little bit more how innovation uh, and collaboration in Switzerland could help our, our company. So Involi stems from the fact that it is still today very difficult to safely share the sky uh, there is a high collision risk between drones, helicopter, aircraft, etc. In, in the sky. And this becomes even more complicated if we are talking about beyond visual line of sight drone application. And as of today, there is no end-to-end -end solution for complete flight awareness. And the, the, the consequence of that is that we cannot have scalable commercial drone application. Usually those are very uh, small scale drone application and I'm mostly talking about beyond visual line of sight. Also there is no redundancy in air traffic information and this is not aligned with aviation requirements. So what we say is most of the time drones are blind to air traffic and without a complete flight awareness many drones opportunities especially BVLOS are today impossible. So the solution, if we say that drones are blind to air traffic at Involi, we try to give them eyes, which means that we provide them with complete and unique air traffic data. And we really try to have some data that is uh, accurate based on state-of-the-art technology that is gathered by our own network of sensors. And the goal is to provide unparalleled flight awareness in order to have the safest of the drone mission possible. And by providing this layer of safety and security in the sky, we hope to enable uh, all the commercial, exciting commercial drone applications, such as beyond visual line of sight. And I'm, when I'm saying that drone are blind to air traffic, I'm referring to this picture of this air traffic awareness. Everything that you see in, in orange, usually it is a blind spot for air traffic awareness. Uh, this is kind of the image where the expression to fly under the radar comes from. Everything that is in, in orange, usually we have no idea about if there is a helicopter, an aircraft or a drone flying. So we complete the existing air traffic picture that is providing usually by radars by installing on the ground a network of Involi sensors on top of existing infrastructure. And I'm mentioning this because usually it is rooftops, uh, telecommunication antennas, and the goal of that is to gather and detect all the air traffic around. In more details with regard to the technology, we have first the hardware part, and mostly this, this or the air traffic receiver that you, that you see here on the picture, that are installed on the ground uh, as a network. So multiple sensors that cover, cover a designated area and act as a communication network. Um, they are deployed onto existing infrastructure, uh, such as telecom, rooftop, railways, wind turbines, etc. And there is a second part of our technology that is around software. And I specifically mention this because a lot of the innovation that we are discussing today and that is uh, at, at the heart 
uh, of this presentation is the innovation with regard to processing and algorithm. So all the data that is captured and gathered by the air traffic receiver is centralized onto a server that runs all the computer processing and the interesting algorithm that will be further displayed uh, onto a web interface. And here, and especially on the software side, I mentioned some of our innovation and collaboration partners. So really just to name a few, we have, of course, the research institute, institute such as the PFL. Uh, we have Swiss companies such as Swisscom, Skyguide, or the Swiss Post um, Airport, such as the Geneva Airport or the Buax Airport. And on the other side, we also have a lot of startup support. And here I'm just mentioning a few uh, of those uh, foundation companies, entities or government bodies that have helped us to, to grow uh, as a startup. And the consequence of that is that we could really reach internationally thanks to all these uh, supports, all those collaboration, all the demonstration that, that we did in Switzerland. Now, I, I would like to give you some use case about a technology like ours, um, because uh, everyone understands that it makes sense to safely share the sky uh, with the rest of the air traffic, but sometimes just a few use cases uh, help a lot. So the goal is really to safely coordinate uh, every type of flying object. And one of the most uh, up-to-date, let's say, uh, use case is to provide safe medical drone deliveries between hospitals. You, you may have a drone transporting blood, organs, or, or whatever, uh, COVID-19 tests, and the drone needs to be aware of a helicopter that may be randomly coming uh, or going to the helipad. So it needs to know and anticipate the trajectory of the helicopter in order to avoid it. Another interesting use case would be to coordinate uh, a lot of different types of flying objects. I say here in case of a fire, because you would have the drone that would be detecting the fires, mapping the, the extent of the damage, but then you need to have also a real, uh, the picture of the sky thanks to, the, thanks to the, the helicopter, the water bomber that needs to extinguish the fire, etc. And when I said we were extending internationally, it's really in, in just a few years, we have interested quite a lot of countries worldwide. And this is really thanks to this home of drone uh, program that is really, uh, that, that we can showcase internationally. We are a member of the Swiss Youth Space Implementation that is an initiative that is now seen very positively by a lot of countries internationally and our system, uh, the Involi system is now deployed over the whole country and, uh, and we are powering this nationwide vision of, of the sky and the safe integration of drones into the air traffic in Switzerland. So I, I hope I could showcase a little bit how Switzerland really helped us developing our, our innovation, how the collaboration that we had in Switzerland and the, the support we could leverage from the country really helped us uh, targeting internationally other countries. And I would be happy to answer other questions you may have at the end of the panel. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Melanie. Highly interesting, and I'm sure we will have some questions for you at the end of today's session. However, right now I would like to give the floor to David Lanter, co-founder of Tinamu Labs, uh, based in Zurich. David, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lucas. And uh, it's great that the early stage startup always also can give his opinion about the Swiss uh, Swiss drone startup ecosystem. So we at Tinamo Lab, we automate monitoring workflows inside of buildings using drones. So one of our first customers, the Swiss energy producer Oxpo, has to monitor the inside of water dams on a weekly basis. Therefore, they send a human operator to the remote location. He walks through the entire facility, takes measurements, travels back to the headquarters, creates a manual report, and then decide upon next steps. 
you can see this procedure is very time consuming it's expensive sometimes it can be dangerous and it can be generalized across many industries such as conveyor belt inspection inventory count, counting power power plant inspection etc we at Tinamo Labs, we automate such workflows by providing a drone-based analytic platform. So instead of sending a human operator to the remote location, a user in front of the computer triggers a drone that is placed in the remote infrastructure. The drone takes off, collects data, sends the data to the cloud where it is processed, and then the real-time insights are delivered back to the user in front of the computer. We at Tinamo Labs, we create the software building blocks for this kind of solution, meaning the interface, the, the analytic software, and the drone navigation. However, and this is very important, we do not manufacture our own drone hardware. For the drone hardware, we rely on partners such as the French company Paradox. Our technological innovation stands on three pillars. First, we have a drone navigation software called Virtual Rails. Virtual rails are basically local drone airspaces that cannot be left by the drone. Secondly, we have developed an indoor position system that gives the drone a centimeter accurate position even when no GPS is available. And as a third element, we have years of experience in viewpoint optimization, meaning we can guarantee that the drone always takes the same pictures exactly from the same angle. So as an early stage startup, we now have an automated indoor prototype ready that can be deployed for POCs. So our solution is drone agnostic and therefore can be used with a wide, with a wide variety of drones. Sorry. Yes, exactly. The one you see here in the picture is, um, is a drone from private, from Parrot French manufacturer. So our solution also works in complete darkness and it allows for the automatic inspection of points of interest such as cracks in the wall or for reading of um, analog measuring devices. Using a drone as a flexible sensor is a very efficient way to overcome any kind of obstacle, for instance, like steep and slippery stairs in a dam. So we are a growing ETH spin-off with seven full-time employees combining business, engineering, and entrepreneurial skills. We all had the opportunity to attend and to graduate from top-tier technical universities and to gain work experience at prestigious companies. So we have Toby, he developed the technology core virtual rails during his PhD. We have Dani, who already successfully founded an ETH spin-off. Samuel, computer, computer vision expert. Martin, with um, vast experience in GPS as he worked for a leading GPS company. Um, Stefan, our machine learning expert. And Christoph, a specialist in user interface. We are VC-backed and our investor base consists of three Swiss and US investors that, fo that focus on deep tech investments. So the Swiss ecosystem is outstanding when it comes to startup support and funding. There are many initiatives that strongly supported our positive development over the last 24 months. So first, the research at the Swiss University is world class, and so is the graduating talent pool that is really capable of transforming complex ideas into products. That's one of the reasons why many highly innovative companies spawn out from ETH Zurich or, e or EPFL Lausanne. And we have the chance to participate in different support programs. Two with very high impact are either organized by ETH itself for its startups or by InnoSwiss. Um, the Swiss Innovation Agency. As ETH is really pushing to bring novel technology to the market, they support their startups as we are one um, with marketing activities, with business trainings, or with industry access. On the other hand, also InnoSwiss is providing a, a certified coaching, but they also support startups and science-based projects with substantial funding and research workforce. For instance, we just conducted a preliminary study together with InnoSwiss. The third point, 
the Swiss based drone system or drone startups are tightly connected as many of them emerged from the same research labs. Having tight connections to other startups for us is a very efficient way to solve problems and particular, particularly to, to learn from later stage startups and to avoid making the same mistakes if any mistakes have been done, of course. Then the investor base here in Switzerland is continuously growing, meaning VCs and large funds start to focus more and more on deep tech investments that have a very high R&D uh, R requirements. And another point is that Switzerland also remains a hotspot for large industrial and tech companies. So the close proximity for us is a very important important part to establish a strong relationship to a potential partner that has the power to bring new technology to a global market. That is also one of the reasons why we just joined the Microsoft startup program. And as a last point to mention is that the regulatory frameworks, as it also, as it already has been mentioned by my by the other speakers, um, is very progressive and under these conditions it's possible to quickly iterate and to test in all environments. So with my view on the Swiss ecosystem and how we as an early stage startup team Labs benefit from it, I close my presentation and thanks a lot for your attention. And if you have any questions, I think the Q&A afterwards will be a great moment. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. Highly interesting. And uh, again, I'm sure we will receive qu uh, questions. In fact, we already received some. Uh, I will tackle those after the presentations of Enzo and Alessandro. So now it gives me, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, two gentlemen representing the Swiss Drone Base Camp, the competitive center that is part of the Switzerland Innovation Network located in the beautiful canton of Ticino. The first speaker will be Enzo Giannini, president of the Association of Swiss Growth Drone Base Camp in Lodrino. Enzo, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm happy to be here uh, with uh, all of you talking about drone uh, in uh, in a, a little bit different to uh, to what the my predecessor talk about. They talk about uh, drones, about application of drones. I am more an enabler. I will present no drone. There will be my colleague uh, Alessandro after that presenting what is going on in Ticino with the drone. Uh, so you will not see video about drones, but you see uh, on the on the first slide, you see what I'm selling or what I'm presenting is a place, is a base camp, because all this activity need a meeting point. They need like uh, you prepare a mission to go to the Everest. You need to have a point where you, you, you start testing your uh, equipment, you can meet other specialists and, and so on. It is exactly what I'm doing, taking the opportunity of a former air base, a military air base that is uh, taken over by, by the public, uh, uh, by the government, and is uh, now at disposal for a certain type of activity. So we are putting there uh, some uh, play uh, room uh, to uh, to develop this innovation. So I explain in very fast a couple of uh, stuff. Where is that? Uh, so Lodrino is middle of nowhere. So, but it's good if you want to test drone, it's better be in the middle of nowhere, but it's not true. It's middle of Europe, as you see, is uh, on the south part of Switzerland, where the silver sun is shining. Um, and in, uh, it's about one half hour from uh, uh, Milano and one half hour of, of, of Zurich. So it's pretty in the center of the center. And this is very good if you want to just uh, make some tests and so on. So it's, uh, it's about that. Um, there you have some infrastructure, you have a runway, but you have airspace. That's uh, the point. What we want to do there? So we don't want just to fly a drone. So it will be uh, sure one of the arguments. We have uh, there a uh, couple of uh, of uh, arguments. So one is a cluster about safety. That's uh, for sure test, training, uh, consulting, information, uh, certification, networking in that area. But in a way, uh, focus to, to the safety. Uh, another point is uh, for sure the, um, the development there with uh, FabLab or uh, or uh, uh, 
specialist facility, uh, development kits and so on. So that's for startups, as David say, it's very important to have uh, some help at the beginning. And uh, if we uh, proceed there, we have uh, a, a community ready, and that's a point of a meeting, a meeting point where you you meet other people. Like David say, that's very good if you work with other company doing the same or extending your application and so on. And this is uh, the community uh, needs certain uh, certain point of exchange, and being there doing some tests may be a good point uh, discussing. Another point is, as I say, uh, coaching and uh, and help uh, in the proof of concept consulting networking promotion. This all in order to explore new application, innovate and enable uh, industrialize as uh, in general as a facilitator of their own project. This is what we want to do. Why we do that? Not just because we like drones, but for a market need. There is a need for testing sites. So uh, Zurich is not middle of nowhere, but it's there. It's a little bit difficult to test uh, the drone middle of the city. And uh, Melanie, uh, as I say, there are helicopters and other uh, airplane around. So uh, before going with their system, you need to do some tests. So you need that. Um, we are independent, so we are not non profit oriented. We are just promoting there, and we are not just a group of company, a club or an association. We are just pushing that, offering that possibility. We have a, an airport, that's interesting. And uh, more important is a dedicated airspace. We share with some airplane and helicopter, but we have some dedicated airspace. And uh, we have already a good collaboration with the uh, authority and academy and industry. So we have already some contacts you will see. We have, uh, Alessandro will tell about some good qualification, uh, qualified competencies and people are there in uh, locally. And as I said before, we are in the center. So who, were, uh, who are the company? If you look at that, the founding members, we have uh, Istituto delle Molle. Uh, Alessandro will talk about that after that. And we have other company in between, also the company I'm working with. Um, there are company doing a different kind of uh, activity. These are companies doing a smart city, for instance, and so on. But we have already a letter of interest that you see. We have uh, a lot of uh, academy, uh, industrial, international, and uh, uh, institutional partner. And we are in contact with other. You've already seen some of these uh, logos already in the presentation of our colleagues. How we will do that? very very good just by renting facility uh, building up a training center that can help everybody uh, proposing and uh, shared uh, fab lab uh, renting airspace the community management I talked about uh, events and communication is always good to having this exchange that i talk about also uh, it as you've seen before, David taught it, uh, and uh, Melanie also, IT is very important. So offering service in that area. And very important is this kind of extended campus in between uh, uh, academy and, uh, and uh, the, um, the industry. So I close with the last news. Uh, we started as a separated initiative with the help of AGIR, that is a foundation for startup in uh, Ticino. We are now part of the Switzerland Innovation Park Zurich, so we are in an even greater uh, network and we are proud of it and uh, we are keen to work with all together. So that's it and I'm looking forward to having some interesting questions at the end of the panel. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. And so, so without further ado, I would like to give the floor to Dr. Alessandro Giusti, the head of the robotics lab at Itzia, one of the most influential AI labs in the world. Alessandro, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Can you see the presentation? Perfect. Okay, great. Um, so I am from uh, ITSIA, uh, it's at the Dallemal Institute for Artificial Intelligence. It's uh, a research institute uh, uh, founded in 1988. We are uh, in Ticino and we have uh, more or less 80 uh, people working on different subfields of uh, artificial intelligence. 
Um, today, I'm just going to give a quick overview of the activities we are doing related to aerial robotics. Uh, this is because we are uh, one uh, founding members. We are the main research partner for the Swiss drone base camp, as presented before by Enzo. Uh, that's uh, uh, us there. So in general, the Institute uh, has uh, uh, quite a lot of expertise in working with AI. In uh, uh, 2016, we were uh, nominated by NVIDIA as one of the pioneers in AI research together with uh, much larger institutions such as Stanford, Carnegie Mellon, MIT, and so on. Um, so I'm going through some of our recent research uh, related to robotics and in particular related to drones. Uh, most of this research is uh, uh, funded by the uh, Swiss National uh, Center of Competence in Robotics. Uh, and uh, in particular, in this case, uh, we are working with human-robot interaction. Uh, we developed uh, through a, a PhD student here uh, a system for pointing-based control of uh, uh, both uh, drones and also uh, robots, ground robots. And uh, this um, has resulted in quite a lot of uh, interesting uh, papers and applications. Then we are also very active in the theme uh, that the Professor Sigvart mentioned before, that is allowing uh, drones to perceive their environment, which is uh, nowadays one of the uh, big uh, important topics. Uh, to unlock the, poten uh, the, the potential of robotics in general and drones in particular. Uh, so in this in this case, we are uh, this is a work that we are doing very um, uh, very recently. We have been doing in the last few months. Uh, we are working with these nano drones that are uh, very very small, uh, less than 30 grams, and we are able to run uh, uh, very powerful convolutional neural networks on them using very very little energy, um, completely on board. And this allows us to do uh, state-of-the-art deep learning, including also some uh, self-supervised learning approaches, meaning that these drones are able to improve their performance automatically by just being used. Uh, this is an example of what the drone is seeing, and uh, um, the, the, the blue dots uh, are indicating what the drone, uh, what the neural network on the drone decides uh, to do in the different times, whereas the uh, green arrows show uh, what the drone should do in that moment. And you, you see that they match quite well, which means that our uh, system works pretty uh, pretty well in order to, in this case, the application was uh, for the drone to stay in front uh, of people. Again, this is a, uh, this is a task uh, for human-robot interaction. Uh, and uh, finally, one um, work we did in uh, 2016 uh, was about allowing drones to uh, operate in forests. That is in contrast to, to what was shown before uh, by Professor Sigvart. In this case, we are not doing any uh, 3D explicit 3D reconstruction of the environment, but we are using a system that is much closer uh, to actual animal brains by just looking at the picture that is in front of the drone. Uh, we want to understand, uh, we want to see where uh, there is a trail, if there is a trail in the picture, and in that case, where it is heading. The problem is actually very well exemplified here. You can see with our eyes, with our brains that are very good at solving this type of problems, that there is a trail on the left, in these two pictures on the left, that is on the center here and on the right, here to the right. And uh, in this work, we uh, built a large data set by placing uh, three GoPro cameras on the head of one of our uh, researchers and uh, hiking for uh, hours on the beautiful uh, trails of Ticino, collecting very large data sets and training neural networks that are capable of recognizing which is the direction of the trail. As you can see here, this is just a phone held in my hand. You can see that the dot uh, identifies the direction where the neural network thinks there is a trail in these uh, pictures. So here I was walking, I was just checking that the neural network would actually detect the trail where it actually is. Uh, and uh, then we moved to actually placing the neural network on 
the robot itself and letting the, the robot fly uh, by itself, as you have seen in the first, in the beginning of the video. Now it actually stopped. Well, that's uh, um, unfortunate. But th that was anyway my last uh, slide. I think we, um, yeah, that, that concludes uh, my presentation. That the last slide was just uh, uh, thank you, everybody. <laughs> so that's the point. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Alessandro. This has been highly interesting. And as I announced, we received a few questions. I suggest we start with a question that probably all of the speakers have, a, have an opinion. Um, thank you, Lea Feng. Uh, you were asking, so which product and service features should drone startups in Switzerland prioritize on to gain a competitive advantage on the market? Is it cost? Is it quality? Is it flexibility? Design? Quick delivery? I mean, we have so many good things to pick from in Switzerland. How can Swiss companies and startups achieve a competitive advantage? Edge over its competitors outside of Switzerland and in the US. Roland Sigward, how do you see companies and startups from Switzerland positioning themselves and getting a better competitive advantage? Probably we can already have a look uh, somewhat in the past what happened. Um, in principle, Switzerland um, was at the origin of a lot of pioneering work for drones. But the mass market was then covered by DJI and other companies uh, from China. And I think this is not the field where we are strong. On the other side, in parallel, we had uh, this uh, SenseFly, the first uh, company which really was offering services for more professional use. And I think this is the field where we are strong, where there is really a deep understanding on the needs from the, the user's end. And it's not large volume, but uh, still reasonably good volume, where you have to understand the whole um, tasks the robots have to do, they have to adapt this to different applications. Thank you so much, Roland. Uh, Melanie, where do you see the Swiss startups in, in, in drones uh, getting a competitive advantage? I, I think the competitive, uh, the competitive advantage that we have is in having such a ability for collaboration uh, within Switzerland. This opportunity that we have to try many things and we are supported every step of the way, not only by the network of industries, but also by uh, the authorities and uh, all the, um, regulation, the regulation bodies that help make it uh, a reality. So we have something that is fairly unique in the sense that we are always discussing uh, with the Confederation, with the state, with uh, the ANSP, and they are also part of the solution. And I think this is a huge differentiator compared to a lot of other countries. Thank you so much, Melanie. David, anything to add on your end? Um, actually, not. was pretty well answered already, I would say. Um, I think an, another point is just that we have, um, it's time to market on for the Swiss startups, right? Um, as, as mentioned, the regulatory environment allows us to test and to iterate on solutions very quickly. Mm -hmm. I think it's really mm -hmm. an aspect of time as well. Enzo and Alessandro, how do you see the impact of the Swiss drone base camp in Ticino and how can you help Swiss startups to get a competitive advantage? So uh, from my side, uh, Ticino is just a place. So we are, as I said before in my presentation, we are uh, connected. Uh, Melanie said that uh, the connection is very important. The uh, international approach being here, we have a lot of very good uh, competencies and skills. We have seen uh, what uh, Professor Sigward presented, uh, uh, a lot of uh, competencies. Uh, Alessandro uh, on the south has uh, so a lot of competencies. We have just uh, uh, to combine that and uh, David met uh, in his presentation a very good list of points. We have uh, the, uh, the money, the authority, uh, I presented the place, Alessandro presented uh, some uh, some uh, research and uh, and uh, Professor Sigurd has, has, has uh, 
also presented a lot of activity going on and this is what makes it interesting the stuff and uh, we have to solve problem we have to bring application that solve problem because the drones need to be part of our world so at the end it's good to be a researcher it's good to find staff but at the end we have to solve problems and that's for me the point i would also add maybe that uh, Switzerland has access to a, a lot of talent coming out of uh, uh, like the, the, the best universities in the world. Uh, so that's, uh, I think, a very good plus for companies. Thank you so much. Uh, we are actually at the end of the session. However, I would like to squeeze in another question as um, we have a, a lot of Americans listening and, and watching talking about innovating and collaborating over here in the US, usually uh, people start talking about the FAA, about the, the regulators. So the Swiss FAA, we received a few questions on, on the Swiss FAA, of, on FOCA. How supportive uh, can FOCA be if you launch a new project, if you have a project at the university, or if you want to launch a project at the Swiss Drone Base Camp? Uh, it's an open question. Whoever wants to talk about experiences about the collaboration with FOCA, please, the floor is yours. Hey, if so, nobody wants to start, I'm happy to start. I think uh, this is probably also the beauty in a small country. <clears throat> the connections are much more direct. So you can go and call, um, speak to them. I think uh, at least up to now, I have them seem extremely supportive. Um, I think there are in Europe driving authority to, to bring drones in the public airspace so that we can really use drones even better in the future for different uh, applications. And uh, I think this is also nicely shown, for example, Matternet is doing a lot of their first tests in Switzerland, in Ticino, in Zurich, um, but there is, is an American company. And the reason for this is that it's easier to interact and collaborate with the authorities. Uh, I, I confirm what uh, what uh, Professor uh, said. Six uh, percent. Um, uh, it's the contact with the people. We know the people. They are uh, they are uh, always uh, participating at the events and so on. So we have this connection. It does make it really interesting. And uh, uh, as I say, we are a kind of uh, um, drone valley instead of a, a Silicon Valley where uh, the authority, uh, the, the industry and so on are very interesting in that. And I hope uh, that this will continue that uh, dynamic and that uh, energy. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, looking at the time, we have 12.03 East in the US, which means it's past six in Switzerland, probably time for an appeal. Uh, I would like to thank all the guests joining us, and I would particularly like to thank our speakers today. Thank you so much for sharing all your valuable insights. Again, we will share the presentations in the next few hours as well as the presentation, as well as the, the recording of uh, today's webinar and this leaves me with announcing the next dates of the drone tour the next one will take place on monday december 7 it will be on testing and refining uh, drone drone projects and the last session we will have on monday december 14 on how to partner and how to deploy products related to uav in switzerland Again, thank you so much for being with us today and for learning on how to collaborate and innovate in the drone sector in Switzerland. Here you see the contacts of uh, our colleagues at Invest in Western Switzerland as well as our own contacts. Please don't hesitate to contact us should you have any questions. Thank you so much, Schönen Abend. Have a good evening and see you soon. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.